but man, how was it just being on, on film and doing the movie? And was that your first film or? Uh, it wasn't my first film, but it was the first one I was excited about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell you something. See, shit might seem smooth out here. This Grammy is fucked right. because you know, like that's you know the that's original hard. Dirty Third. Yes, like we grew up watching the hood movies, the I'm about it and the Dirty yeah. Thirds yeah. and the you know choices and all of that type of stuff. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see. Me. Wow, that's no, crazy. but um, one thing I've always wanted. Well, I ask a lot of different Incredible. people is the fact that okay. You're meeting a lot of influential people. You're meeting a lot of networking. How do you elevate that from just a connection to a relationship? You you don't. It has to happen naturally. You know what I mean? That's not something you can force. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, a lot of these dudes I done met ain't been what I thought they was going to be when I met them. That's real. And so you don't want to have that relationship mm -hmm. once you see that. And then a lot of guys that you think wouldn't even pay you the time of day or give you the time of day rather and have every right not to or invite you to their house right. you know what i mean so it's just one of those things where you got to let it be natural but i think that the most important part of that to me is being who you authentically are mm. like a lot of people got a mask on and then they put another mask on to come outside so That's they got to take that one off and then they get in the house and take that one off and then you mm. don't know who you dealing with That's so true. a lot of times you get to you know your judge of character at least me in my opinion my judge of character is, is really stern because of the environment that i come from mm -hmm. i come out of the streets like i wasn't supposed to be here you know in regards to statistical terminology so i i know how to read certain shit and i'm very observant you know what i mean i'm i speak well i think that's my gift from god communication but at the same time i know how to just watch and observe because if i see you conducting yourself in a manner that i don't conduct myself then it's not really anything that we're going to be able to do even in business because for me i'm cool with not having whatever I don't get from not doing the shit I don't fuck with. Like, I don't do nothing that I don't fuck with. If I don't fuck with it, I don't fuck with it. Mm -hmm. And whatever I, whatever benefits you see from fucking with it that I'm not going to receive, I'm totally fine with not having. So that helps me from being extra friendly or extra unnecessary, having unnecessary relationships, man, because energy is real. Mm -hmm. And you and you surround yourself with a whole bunch of people and unnecessarily trying to come up, then you're going to end up coming up into an environment you ain't going to know how to get out of. Mm -hmm. I want to ask him about that, that dirt, <laughs> the Dirty Third. That, I just want to talk about that movie. I interviewed all them boys. You know, I went down mm -hmm. there giving them hell yeah. in Houston. And I and you was the only one. I was like, I got to get to him, King Noah. I got to get to this cat. And then that was another reason when you called. I'm like, man, I'm behind. You know, <laughs> but man, how was it just being on, on film and doing the movie? And was that your first film? Or uh, it wasn't my first film, but it was the first one I was excited about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell you something. See, shit might seem smooth out here. This Grammy is fucked right. because you know, like that's you know the that's original hard. Dirty Third. Yes, like we grew up watching the hood movies, the I'm about it and the Dirty yeah. Thirds yeah. and the you know choices and all of that type of stuff. So and then I love Houston, like I love, okay. I just love Texas as a whole, the whole state. Like, I, but I grew up on Houston culture. So I was so familiar with the culture to go down there and get embraced by these dudes who are entrenched in the culture man. is was man, it was it was fun for me. You know what I mean? I've met Jay Prince. I've had conversations. We interview him like, you know, he's extended olive branches to us. Like, you know, Mike Prince is my guy. Like when oh. I go down there like that's my dude. You know, yeah, like yeah. outside of just I call him just to check on him and see how he doing type shit. Like so for me, the Houston culture is one of the biggest cultures that influenced me, you know, because UGK was such a big influence Man, to me, you, you know, even though they're that. from Port Arthur, but still, you yeah, know, it's in. punchline, you yeah. keep, anytime you say Pimp C on the show, I usually stop, don't I? Mm -hmm. I stop everything because you done said it twice. I be, I'm watching, I'm listening. I usually want to talk about Pimp because I'm a big Pimp C fan like you. Oh, now yeah, listen, man. <laughs> pimp, pimp is the only, the only person that wasn't in my family that I ever wanted to be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I wanted to yeah. be like that yeah. nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga Watching hard. him, that was the only rapper that I ever wanted to be like. You know what I'm saying? I remember the first time I heard Diamonds and Wood, it Woo. just was like, oh I my talk, God. Man. And it's like, 
to get to this point in my life, like that verse among many of them yeah. is one that sticks with me about what comes with yeah. this lifestyle. Yeah. And for me, I've always been somebody, so it's always impacted me. But as I got into the point where he was at when he made it in regards to status, it means even more, more. because I know what it had to take to get those words mm. out. You know what I'm saying? So for me going down there to Houston, I'm always in Houston. I'm always in Dallas or you wanted the two. Yeah. I love Texas. Texas like, you know love what I mean? You. I Listen. love Texas, man. Like this is I really feel like if it was ever a secession from the union, Texas could survive. Oh yeah. This the only oh, state yeah. in America you know that has survived. I, you I niggas mean, don't why you ain't moved to Texas. I mean, Listen, hey, we man. Really have to. hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Trust me. You know, no Robert, state Robert taxes too, nigga. Woo! Robert Robert Smith from Washington D.C. You never heard of Robert? He's the richest black, black American man. man. Mm -hmm. He from D.C. Yeah, but he, but lived he lives in Austin. In Austin. A word, yeah. Robert. Holla at your boy, man. I didn't know you. It's just my bad. I ain't but never been to Austin too. That, uh, that 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 museum we went the to, the Black American uh, Museum. Oh yeah, I never been there. That's the only major city in Texas I've never been to is Austin. No, it's in. in, in I'm talking about the one in D.C. Yeah. But I've just never been you to never Austin. Been to Austin. But Houston. And Dallas, man, like I, I always had a connection to Houston because of the music and the culture that I was mm -hmm. raised off. And I always had a connection to Dallas because, you know, in D.C., them cowboys, man. Yeah, y'all don't get along they, with us. They, listen, no. You know how many fucking cowboy oh, fans, fans it is everywhere. in D.C.? My mama is a was a die -hard. She I buried my mama in a cowboy casket get in a cowboy the cow jersey. Girl, what? She loved the Cowboys. Man, much. Wanda was a diehard Cowboy fan. I'm talking about for yeah, real. Would argue with anybody over N it. Argue. You <laughs> might have to put your hands up playing with them boys around Wanda Bean. Who like was her favorite player? Man, Emmitt Smith. Mm. Yeah, Emmitt Smith. Emmitt Smith. She loved you Emmitt, go. man. You but, go. you know, she, like, just that that connection just being from the city like it's Dallas Cowboys Washington that's why I'm a Broncos fan cause I just <laughs> picked it, right? I just picked the team that was the furthest away from any of that shit that shit causes <laughs> whenever the Redskins and the Cowboys play in the city you will see your loved ones fist fight each other over $50 it's crazy <laughs> okay answer this question why does everybody all around the world love the cowboys? Love cowboys. That's right. Why is cowboys so called the American team? And why has no so called? It ain't no so called. So -called. And why is. is the cow? Why has the cowboy haven't won in? Don't matter. It don't matter because man, it's one. It's something about that star, man. What made that them star that? On that? That star on that helmet, man, and Jerry Jones. You know, you got to give it to Jerry Jones, man. Jerry Jones, as much shit as they talk about how he's running the program now, like that dude is a genius when it comes to that football programming, man, and how he did it. it, it you know, the way he, when he got the team and the way he, you know, ran it and, and, and the way he promoted not just the football, but the brand. See, a lot of football teams is just football teams. The mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys are a brand. brand. It's bigger than football with the Cowboys. Like, the Cowboys is one of them teams where you could have something going, the cheerleaders, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can get booked somewhere, and they just the cheerleaders. Like, it's a brand. So, I don't know how the Cowboys and the Red. I think it's guess it's just the Cowboys Indians because it used to be the Redskins. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's just it. what created it. But it's something about that star man on that helmet that just make people fall in love with it. And then when they was winning, they was just they was winning, winning. Like mm -hmm. the Cowboys of the '90s when they did win them three championships. To me, like those three Super Bowls were more impactful than any other Super Bowl because nobody else is still hanging on to the ones that they won back then like <laughs> Cowboys fans. <laughs> yep. Like the, the Chiefs. <laughs> no, nigga, the Chiefs have won the past couple years. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Cowboys. And then every year, they going to win the Super Bowl. Every year. Next every, year. Next year every, every year. every year. And to be able to implement. And get to the playoffs. and To be able to implement that type of dedication <laughs> to something. Like, that is nothing but marketing I'm genius. I'm dedicated, too. Yeah, of course you is. Yeah. It's marketing genius, man. Like, to have somebody be that delusional. Oh, every whoa, year. Whoa, thank you. Every whoa, single whoa. year. Whoa. It's like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's crazy. So, but my mother was one of them delusional people. Man, like, when I tell you, you man, man every Sunday. I want to see Cowboys one jersey. more win before I got to go. 
A Super Bowl? I want Jerry Jones to get one before he, he goes. Go, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want him to get one before he go because you know what I mean. I don't want him to be out here like Mr. Burns off The Simpsons, Smithers. Like, I want him to. I want. I do want to see them, and then just for what it to see what it what it will do. Like, yeah. Because the reason why I think people get so upset about the Cowboys, in my opinion, is because they haven't won in so long. And if you haven't experienced what it's like when oh, the you Cowboys win, exactly. you don't different. know what it's like the when the Cowboys world, win. If the Cowboys win a Super Bowl, you'll see why the Cowboys are the Cowboys. Wow. But I don't think that's like... When Jamaica win anything, I've experienced that, and I don't think... I'm wondering, would it be like that here? And what I mean, this is how Jamaica is when they win. You go outside anybody's house, everybody's outside with pots and pans. I mean, the street will be packed. You think it's a street party. Everybody's out celebrating. Yeah, but Without that's music. Jamaica, Jamaica won. We talking about United States, If the States, Cowboys man. win, they gonna be outside with pots and pans in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like this is, it's a different, a different monster, monster with them boys, man. And I respect it because my mother loved them so, so much. much. Like, I, you know, that's one thing that, I wasn't able to do with her that, that we had planned before she passed away. We was going to take her to a cowboy Cowboys game, man, game. and, you know, just let her experience that. But right. she she loved the Cowboys, so I understand the fandom. And it's it's bigger than football with the Cowboys, man. <laughs> as delusional as the fans are. Like, if I can get some fans to be dedicated to Chico being like Cowboy Dang. fans, I, boy, <laughs> I'm in the game. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.